So where do these trigonometric ratios come from? In this video, we're gonna focus on the 45 degree angle or the pi over four angle in radians and figure out where sine, cosine, and tangent come from in these situations. So let's start out with a nice square. And in the square, let's go ahead and label each one of our side lengths as one. Pretty straightforward. We also have 90 degree angles on each one of these corners because it is a right, you know, it's a square, so it's 90 degrees in every single uh, corner. From here, let's go ahead and next draw a line that connects two of these corners together. So what, what's happened here is we have um, taken this 90 degree angle on either one of these corners and we split it directly in half. So what I mean by that is when it's directly in half, we should have 45 degree angles on each one of these angles. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discard kind of the top left of this square that I've drawn at the top. What that's gonna leave us with is 45 degree angles. We have one unit side lengths on each one of these sides of our triangle. And we still have this 90 degree or right angle in the bottom right, okay? From here, let's think about um, if we wanna find sine, cosine, and tangent, we're gonna need the opposite. I'm gonna focus on this 45 degree angle on the bottom left. Therefore, labeling this, this would be our opposite. This would be our adjacent. And we don't know our hypotenuse, um, the side length across from the right angle. So to find that hypotenuse, what I'm gonna suggest is let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna use C to represent that hypotenuse for the time being. Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So in our case, we can say adjacent perhaps is the A, so one squared plus the opposite, let's use that as our B, one squared, and then C squared still left on the right-hand side. Well, with a little reducing down here, we can say one squared is one plus one equals C squared. So C squared is it gonna be two. To get C by itself, we need to get rid of the square. So we're gonna apply a square root to both sides. We can say that C is gonna be the square root of two. All right, now thinking about SOHCAHTOA as we wanna set up, um, sine is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So we could write out sine of 45 degrees or pi over four is gonna be given by the opposite over the hypotenuse. So one, over the square root of two. With a little bit of rationalizing here, getting rid of the square root from the denominator, we can multiply numerator and denominator both by the square root of two. So we multiply numerators together, we get square root of two times one, a square root of two. And then denominators, we get square root of four, which is really equivalent to two. So that's where we get square root of two over two for sine. We can also do a very, very similar um, computation for getting cosine would be um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, you get one over the square root of two, same thing here. That's where the square root of two over two comes from. And then if we wanna get tangent, tangent is gonna be opposite over adjacent. So square root of four, sorry, tangent of 45 is gonna be opposite over adjacent. So one over one is where we get one from. So tangent of 45 is gonna be one. Now, as far as getting the cosecant, secant and cotangent, what we can do is we can use our reciprocal identities if we know that sine of 45 is, equal, is the reciprocal of cosecant of 45 degrees, that these two go hand in hand, sine and cosecant, an S and a C go hand in hand. But what you wanna do is you wanna take the reciprocal. So I'm gonna use the version where we had one over the square root of two, and I'm gonna invert that or go square root of two over one, which works out to be the square root of two. That's where the square root of two comes from for cosecant in a very, very similar fashion with secant and cosine going hand in hand. Remember we said cosine uh, could be adjacent over hypotenuse. So one over the square root of two for that as well, which would result in the exact same solution. Um, and then cotangent is tangent inverted, the reciprocal. So if you have one over one and you invert that, the reciprocal is still gonna be one over one. That's why cotangent of 45 degrees or square root of four, uh, pi over the square root of four is gonna be one as well. All right, I hope this helps out on figuring out like 
where did these even come from? How do we get these ratios? It's really not that bad. Um, make yourself a square and then break it down. Good luck.